It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback is day of the week. Ha, I was all over the place there. It's Feedback Friday, and yes, I am as tired as I look. Um, But hello to all the new Galatea fans out there. I'm so excited. The number of people this week who are like, Galatea is awesome. And yes, yeah, she has a much bigger audience than I do, but Still, the fact that I can introduce someone that op- uh, I mean, full credit goes to Song. She was the one that went and, and made contact and booked her and, and everything like that. And my favorite part of the whole conversation, it's a wonderful conversation. The following parts are just as good as the first one. Galatea is phenomenal. Um, but the best part for me is how happy Song was. It's a really cool thing when you can do something and it's just feel good all around. Um, It's rare. And so I cherish these things when they happen. Um, It's awesome. And I'm very, very glad. Part, Part of my thing is when I was coming up, I got sandbagged by a lot of older women. And so I swore I wouldn't be that person who climbed the ladder and then kicked it down so that no other women could follow. I I want all the women I work with to be more successful than me. I um, really believe that we have to stop complaining about outside forces and do what we can to to move forward the things we believe need to be done. And that this, this ties in to the, uh, the, the theme of this video. So if you like this content, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, uh, or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for some of you who can't afford it, coffee.com slash Leanna K. Somebody made a big, big donation like a big one shot, boom, all of last week's sessions all at once. So that was uh, greatly appreciated. But if you want to join our Discord, the Patreon uh, link has gone out for this week. The coffee one hasn't. So if you want to pay for a Leanna Care session, there are quite a few people who are experiencing financial hardship right, uh, right now. And so the support for those sessions for people is is greatly appreciated i wish i could just do it for free but you know i need money too um so uh yeah negativity is not clever it's exhausting do you notice i started with uh, a positive about bringing galatea onto him and talking and how great it was yeah and it was cool to watch that yeah um it takes some courage to uh be positive about something because people will go no you're wrong and just ruin your good time i know there's certain things i don't talk about because people shit on it and I'm not interested. Uh, so it does take some courage to be positive in public. And it, it, you know, the cynicism, the negativity, it doesn't make anyone seem clever. It doesn't. It doesn't make you seem smart. No, it doesn't. It's exhausting. Th- now that doesn't, there's been this whole thing this week between the sweet baby stuff in gaming, which I find very uninteresting um, and don't, I'm done, I've done my time on those things. I do not want to get into it because I really don't find people are looking to be persuaded anymore. So, you know, people are going to think what they want about that. I have no, I, I have no direct information on the players there. So I don't know. But then the James Somerton H bomber guy stuff, which to me, people lost their minds on. There's been this whole negativity is smart versus all criticism is bullying deal. 
And no, all criticism is not bullying. I do criticism. You know, we had a whole uh, conversation on the Discord this week on, you know, some of the not so subtle sexist elements in Baldur's Gate 3 and how I said I'm just not interested in talking to that about them in public because people won't listen. They don't want to hear it. They just want their dysfunctional baby girl vampire bear sex game. And fine, you know, it's you can it is better to have these conversations among people who are actually willing to listen. And I find that the the sort of public YouTube social media space, people aren't in a listening mood right now. Some people are, not all. But it's just, I know I'm just checking out because of all the negativity of late. It is impossible to know it, what criticism is good faith and poorly expressed versus what criticism is bad faith. And it does matter how you express criticism. It, it, there is a more effective and less effective way to express criticism. For instance, instead of going just, you're wrong, you have to provide some reason why. And I found a lot of comments on Monday and Tuesday's videos were of the form, you're wrong because you're feminist or something like that. It's like, that's not an argument. That's not refuting the central premise. I can't do anything with that. Like, I can't even, I can't even respond to it. You may notice even the comments I dunk on because of someone's so angry they at least have some substance to the argument. It's not just you're wrong. That and a bag of chips is still not a full meal, right? It. I don't understand that urge. And I'm trying to figure out, I pause now because I'm like, do I want to? And part of me is like, yeah, because I like to understand why people do things. Is it going to be satisfying? Probably or not. Probably not. But I'm still, I'm, I'm interested in why people do things. And that, that brought me to the fact that we talk about that sort of, oh, you're wrong with no reason as entitlement. But I actually... More and more, I don't think it is. The The common thread in all of this gaming's woke, TV's woke, all that stuff. The people I talk to who I know are good people, even though I like really disagree and sometimes they sound like a little scary, um, they're not entitled. They're not. They're the opposite of it. They're afraid. They feel so insecure in the various spaces they inhabit that any sudden move makes them jumpy. That That's not, I deserve to be here, fuck you. That's, that feels like their place, that is an indication that they feel like their place is not stable. It's not firm. And I mean, that's a shitty way to feel. And I can, see, I can empathize with the fact that it's a shitty way to feel without agreeing with the way they choose to express the shitty feeling. Again, feelings are valid. Opinions can be challenged. And what I found really interesting in the responses to Monday's video is how many comments completely ignored when I said, this is not about science. This is not judging. This is for information purposes only. Now, the people who said it would be interesting to see uh, when women say this, men hear that. There's a lot of that out there. And that th that's the significant thing about a lot of nerd media being told from the point of view of a Peter Parker type protagonist that we see his reactions to comments from women we see his struggle 
with stuff. I mean, we don't see very many. It's always the sidekick guy who tends to be normal guy, you know, who might be a bit bigger, not not, you know, less less idealized, but still lovable. Um, that's one of the reasons Blue Eye Samurai was so cool uh, that they show kind of a regular nice guy sidekick as a whole person, including a sexual being, which is awesome. But I do think that there is more of a nuanced male inner world in geek media, just because who's centered. And the problem with the protagonists that are pushed that are women, problem with protagonists that are pushed, I'm getting all my peas in, pop, 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 um, is that they're so perfected and they're so everything, they're so girl boss that, you know, when, when Din Djarin is, you have my sword to Bo-Katan, we never get woman's inner voice dealing with rejection, dealing with being unwanted. We, we don't get that humanity in stories where the media is constantly actively affirming the female lead. The closest we got was She-Hulk, and that was, you know, mentioned in the comments quite a bit, but that was hidden behind these veneers of snark because of the type of show it was. And we saw what happened. And I think that because snark is this defense against appearing vulnerable people mistook it for the show advocating a perspective instead of showing Jen as a hot mess and it is one of the hardest things to write is a character who is vulnerable without going you go without you know backpats for all or just making it so maudlin and I mean I I went through this with you know Solomon in boss fight and he's one of my favorite characters to write because he is so raw and we can get that out um but but it is it does get a little bit it does get really vulnerable because his security his insecurities are so on display and it does feel a bit exposed but that's the whole point it has to be honest without being forced you know i think part of the reason so many people connected to solomon despite his outrage you know is because it's it's not trying to soapbox with him. He's comic relief. He is something of an oaf. But he has experienced intense rejection. And he's trying to be brave about it. And that's the kind of the core of the mistakes we made with community in nerd spaces with gaming and, you know, Disney and Marvel and all that stuff. Especially regarding men. And especially of the, with this dialogue of when you say they hear both sides, right? Um, and I mean, we've, we've tried, it's interesting because we've tried very, very hard on two women talking previously to deal with the fact that, yeah, you know, when, when women are fawning all over shirtless Thor, sure, guys feel inadequate if they don't look like that. M missing the fact that it's not just how he looks. It's not even primarily how he looks. It's that he's kind and appreciative. And Chris Hemsworth is very, very good with the goo-goo eyes towards Natalie Portman. All that stuff matters more than the muscles and this this is why the whole some guys kept going kept on the men are visually stimulated because science thing even though i said 
this is not about science. This is just what women hear. And, you know, I'm coming from this because I feel this requirement to declare. I know I am old. I know I am fat. I know I am ugly. I know I am white. I know I am annoying. I know I am all these undesirable things. I am aware. I am not immune to criticism. I am not believing I am perfect. I know I suck. I know I suck. Are you happy? Do you hear me? You don't have to take me down so many pegs. I am aware. But do you notice that none of those things have anything to do with the strength of my opinions? But that is what people focus on. It's all this stuff that doesn't matter. And you know, the the problem is not just that, oh, men want to knock up hot chicks. It's media believes men only want intellectual opinions from women they want to breed with, which that's the problem, right? And the interesting thing is the guys that I you know, work with with dating frustrations and things like that, what I hear from them is not, I want visual stimulation. (laughs) I hear, I want a good conversation. And they've got out at a lot of dates with women who are visually attractive and nothing interesting to say. And, you know, guys who date a lot have a very different opinion from these guys leaving these comments, which is why Meltdown Buddy on Twitch, it got so under his skin when I asked him if he had a girlfriend. And the funny thing about that is that I would not have dismissed him just for not having a girlfriend. It was just a baseline question. You know, let's... Okay, are you coming at this from someone who's in a happy relationship? Or are you coming across this as someone who's trying to talk tough because he feels rejected? And those are different conversations. And the fact that he got so um, rattled by the question that it exploded hilariously, I, I live for shit like that just because... It's not my intention and watching someone just when I don't think I could get someone to go there if I tried. And there was another guy on Twitch, sorry, Twitter this week. My buddy Asher was uh, uh, continuing the conversation with the guy while I was Twitch streaming and people on on Twitch were doing play by plays of the Twitter conversation because it was one of those, I say I like pancakes, someone says, why do you hate waffles thing? And it, you know, I, at no time did I say I hated waffles. And that's all I kept saying. Because, you know, the original thing I, I put up was about the Jane Somerton thing. And how, I mean, talk about a classic tragedy of a guy who clearly didn't think he could be accepted on his own merits. And so he he stole from other people's work. And my stuff gets plagiarized suddenly quite a bit. But I told you guys, I I do the I did the the women work that I did intending to be plagiarized by the usual suspects. And so when a few of my lines worm their way in to, and, and I, I, you know, I don't believe Anita Sarkeesian personally stole. I believe that somebody passed things on to her that she didn't know were ripped off from my content. I, I don't think she watches my content. I, I hope she doesn't just because it would cause her so much pain from cognitive dissonance. Um, but somebody obviously snuck some stuff in, either via, you know, writing stuff for her or passing the idea on to her unattributed. But it's it, it definitely snuck in 
to feminist frequency stuff. And that was the whole goal. I don't need credit. I want things to be better. And I, I truly believe that if you are an original thinker, that will matter in the long run. But I get that there's an idea of fairness. And I, you guys know when I did Lady Bits and Boss Fight, whenever I used somebody else's video, even if it was a cutscene, I put the credit, you know, in the corner when I can, definitely in the credits to the video when the, the Zelda stuff, which I will continue eventually, it's just been nuts lately. But um, I always put the link to the original video in the credits. I don't swipe people's stuff because you know what? There's no reason to. There's absolutely no reason to. It just undermines you when you can quote it. And um, interestingly, a client pulled a Bell Hooks quote uh, in a session uh, this week that is relevant to to all this stuff, to this whole way men f- convince themselves they have to put up this gruff, aggressive front just to get by that's different from the front women think they have to put up. This, you know, vaguely narcissistic. I'm f- I so fine. I don't care. I don't care about the haters. I am body positive. Like, I don't care what anybody says. When people call you fat and ugly and this and that, it hurts. It hurts me. I know it does. And I'm a tough motherfucker. So I don't believe for a second it doesn't hurt these body positive types. Um, It just, it's designed to hurt. It does hurt. It is not weakness for me to say that it hurts because it doesn't stop me. And I mean, the nasty shit I get is often from other women. So this isn't a patriarchy thing, right? But let me read the bell hooks quote that the uh, the the client said. It contextualizes this this you know negativity and cynicism and all this stuff. The first act of violence that patriarchy demands of males is not violence towards women. Instead, patriarchy demands of all males that they engage in acts of psychic self-mutilation, that they kill off the emotional parts of themselves. If an individual is not successful in emotionally crippling himself, he can count on patriarchal men to enact rituals of power that will assault his self-esteem. That's bell hooks. And I mean, this is why more and more, and I'm, I'm going to save this for Monday, but I think we need to find a new, a new schema, a, a new terminology that isn't patriarchy, because we're really not, um, we're really not functioning in a classic patriarchal structure anymore. But that expectation that we emotionally cripple ourselves, that we engage in acts of psychic self-mutilation, that's real. And men are expected to do it in one way. Women are expected to do it in another way. But I, I do think that this this criticism, this science... um. That is the end result of the psychic self-mutilation, the, the, you know, emotional seppuku. It, it really, it, it really does read as someone cut off from their ability to feel feelings because feeling feelings is bad somehow. And as, as a, you know, recovered emotional self-mutilator um it's better to feel them because i i mean it it's honest for me to say yeah these comments hurt but i come back here and do this anyway do does it affect me sure does it affect um the way i present topics yeah do I like feeling like I have to go I know I'm old fat and ugly listen to me anyway no I I I don't like that I don't 
because personally, I don't think it's relevant. But it seems like unless I cop to the fact that I'm old, fat, and ugly, that unless I declare that bias somehow, I'm not allowed to speak and be heard. And that's a problem. That's a real problem that if even me, who I think old is relative, I don't think I'm terribly ugly, and again, I'm not medically obese, um, but science doesn't matter in these things. It's perception. And so I've been very aware that if somebody says I'm ugly, I am. If somebody says I'm old, I am. If somebody says I'm fat, I am. So what? So what? That's their frame. My frame can be something different. What hurts is that this matters in a discussion about like video games, movies, and TV shows, and people. The fact that this matters is incredibly frustrating. And, and here's why. Here's why I think we've gone so wrong in these spaces. Because, because nerd spaces were formed on a false premise. They were formed on the premise of avoiding exclusion. And so, okay, this was a place could retreat to. Everybody else doesn't want me. Everyone else kicked me out. I can't be kicked out of here. This is safe. This is a nerd space. This is for nerds. We control it. They can't kick me out. I'm living proof you can be kicked out. Um, I've been kicked out of a lot of nerd spaces. Um... And that's fine. But for a lot of people, that feels like death. And so they go around trying to avoid exclusion, trying to avoid getting kicked out of spaces. And they never feel accepted in those spaces. Not really. It always seems conditional. And that's why there's the fear of woke. That's why there's the fear of these conspiracies. Here's the hard truth, though. You can't feel accepted in a place if there isn't the possibility of rejection. One cannot, the concept of acceptance cannot exist without the concept of rejection as a counterpoint. Otherwise, it's all just a null state. So rejection, the possibility of rejection makes feeling accepted possible because you recognize people don't have to take you. So you're happy when you do. And it matters when they do. And that's when that's when those strong bonds form. And that's what we did with the discord um, that. No, we, we we do make sure that everyone there is a real person who is performing authentically, not not under their real name. I'd never ask somebody to do that on the internet in a space like that where they're sharing personal information. But we know who they are within reason. That's why it comes through Patreon or it comes through um, coffee. We can verify who they are. We invite other people who we can verify who they are. And one poor guy, he didn't get verified. And we did a um, we did a purge of unverified accounts recently because uh, we caught a guy catfishing and remove. Well, didn't remove him right away. He kept causing issues, so we removed him from the server. And we're like, okay, any of these secondary accounts could have been him when he joined. So we got to get rid of them all. And some poor guy wasn't paying attention and got caught up in that. So we re-added him. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. But that's important. It's important that people know that the person... Saying something challenging is not a troll. 
and uh, my camera just froze. That's no good. Um, so I'm going to go to the uh, Manly Mondays thing and finish my thought here. That sucks. Um, but so wait, not Manly Mondays. This is Feedback Friday. This is going to shit. Okay, it fixed. Okay, there we go. It sorted its shit out. There we go. Um, so rejection is something we, it feels bad. It feels like physical pain. It does. Uh, but um, we have to face it in order to ever really feel accepted. And that's hard. It can be exhaustingly hard sometimes. And that's why I want to promote the people I think are good. I don't want to focus on the people I think are bad. Uh, I'm not interested in the... We spend a lot of time trying to call out the wrongs, but we don't spend a lot of time community building and we wonder why the community's so shit. Well, you know, that makes sense. We've created a community on the Discord where people have permission to make mistakes and people have permission to say they've made a mistake, but it stays on the mistake, not extrapolates to the person's a bad person. And when people don't respect rules, when people do dehumanize other people and they won't stop, well, they're the people we reject. So the people who stay feel accepted and actively like they belong, not just that people are being prevented from kicking them out. It's not the same thing. And I do think that if nerd spaces were built on a premise of active acceptance, hi, welcome, come in, what's your name? We want you here. If you're cool, we're going to continue to want you here and we're going to continue to express that you're wanted here. Instead of that, it's the premise of non-exclusion which leaves everybody to wonder whether the people around them really do like them or are merely tolerating them because the rules indicate we can't get rid of anyone. That's, you're never going to feel like you actually have friends when you think you're just being merely tolerated. Trust me, I felt that way for years. Um, when I was still trying to make people think I was pretty. I'm not. And that's okay. You know, it. I'm not a pretty person. I'm a tough person. I'm a funny person. I'm a wise person. But Song's a pretty person. You know, even Galatea is a pretty person. They have this quality about them that is legitimately beautiful. I don't get that feedback from the world. Even when I was doing modeling, I was regularly told I was ugly. And I accept that. Modeling was a character. Modeling was a bunch of makeup and hair and clothes and everything like that. Fake pretty. But I'm not. I'm useful. I'm right a lot. And I know shit. You know, it's that Tyrion Lannister thing. I drink it. I know things. And you gotta lean into your strengths. You have to accept who you are. And find people who think you're awesome for that instead of constantly trying to be things you're not. And that's why I don't know why people come to my channel and go on about visual stimulation and fertility and all that stuff. This isn't your people here. This isn't your people here. You're not going to get anywhere. You're not even going to get negative attention. It's just, you're not welcome. And that doesn't mean I'm just going to start blocking commenters. It's just they're not going to be centered. I am focused on the people who understand what I'm doing and agree or disagree, not people who don't understand and therefore don't like it. And that's borrowed from Song. She she had that observation. See, credited a source. Um, and... I'm going to talk about more in this in the coming weeks about trust and, and, you know, a new, 
a new a post patriarchy paradigm. Pe -pe 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 -pe. Uh, all these peas. Uh, but I'm out of time for today. So help support this channel, please. If you like this kind of conversation, if you like somebody who is actually open to a discussion, a, a good faith discussion, patreon.com slash Leanna K um, gets you access to Discord. Also, buying a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can't afford it, coffee.com slash Leanna K. You get that. You also get access to our Discord, and those invites have not gone out this month yet, so now's a good time. Um, other than that, thanks for watching. Thanks for loving Galatea, and uh, have a great weekend.